German PC Game Magazine comes out soon, and we have the scoop on some of the information that's included in there, the roadmap, all the way through 2.7 and the end of the year, today on the BlastCast. Greetings, citizens. Welcome to another week of BlastCast. This one went right down to the wire as of um, Saturday night. I wasn't sure there would be much to talk about. See, here we like to summarize things that we find important or major news information that comes out about the game and really don't like filling it with uh, things we don't have a lot of passion for. So luckily, this managed to work out quite well. Uh, of course, with me, as always, is my bastion of common sense, Lightning Dragon. And we are going to be discussing the German magazine that came out. Uh, PC games extended and how they basically laid out a roadmap for us for the upcoming Star Citizen patches and there was a lot of really good information in here. I don't know so, about you but uh, I could ramble on for about an hour just talking about stupid things. Well yeah I could too. I, I'm, really, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really good it comes at, uh, at stupid things but uh, this posting and a lot of the information some of the translations and stuff came uh, through a Reddit post by uh, Alvarez Basti and also Blah, 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 78. Why well, didn't uh, see that part of the message? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's at the very bottom. I just moved to the top. So, yes. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of blahs. <laughs> so, okay. So, well, let's go ahead and, and get into some of the basic information. And I'll go ahead and put some pictures in here in the background um, of what they showed. And just so you can have it for reference. But what they talked about here, let's start with the basics about 2.6. Uh, They've announced that, that Star Marine will be launching in 2.6 as a separate module like Arena Commander. Um, it, this was actually a play in a playable state by the staff of the magazine, and they said it's much more polished of an FPS than what we have in the Persistent Universe and makes what we have uh, right now feel very rudimentary and basic. So that's great. That's great. A lot of us have been waiting for Star Marine. I couldn't be happier about that. In fact, I think it's very important not only to, uh, to test the mechanics and maybe even fighting against Vandal on the ground to test the AI in that regards, but I think it's a great advertising point for the game. Uh, 2.5 is the current version, right? No, we're in 2.4. 2.5 is what's coming out next. Ah, okay. So, I so wasn't quite sure which one we were on. Yeah, 2.5 should be out by GamesCon. And then 2.6 should be out, I'd imagine, by CitizenCon, if not, if not uh, sooner. In fact, 2.6 might come out before CitizenCon. I guess it's possible, and they'll do 2.7. But that brings us to 2.7. Um, that will have procedural planets, and you'll be able to travel to the whole Stanton system. All the planets and all the moons can be approached down to the surface, is what they said. And uh, they said that there's a... Uh, that the, there's a new lighting system in the game that's incorporated with that, and it makes the... Uh, uh, procedural planets look extremely natural and you'll see pictures here as well you kind of see how the lighting goes on that and it does it looks really really good I'm impressed with what I've seen and uh, I can't wait to see them like do stuff with it like vegetation and things like that um, by far I think the planets look a lot better than Elite Dangerous uh, and I like Elite Dangerous but these these have this this air of um, of more realism going on to it uh, you can Probably land spend in more time on them um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be less of them. Like, well, Elite Dangerous, you're looking at, uh, you know, you've Hundreds got, of thousands oh, or billions of moons. Oh, maybe trillions of planets, of landable, with well, all that procedural and all the systems. Yeah, where with Star Citizen, we're going to have, like, 50 to 100 systems, mm -hmm. and, you know, between 8 and maybe 6 planets or something. Yeah. I mean, not a lot. Yeah. And then, of course, like, a gas giant might have a lot of moons, but nothing. Yeah. Not even, like, a drop in the bucket compared to Elite. Yeah, we might be looking at on the out scale of thousands as opposed to trillions. So they can do, they'll have ability to make those a lot more unique and uh, that, than something like Elite Dangerous, which needs to have even more, more complex uh, procedural routines to, to, to do that kind of operation. Um, and of course, you can land anywhere manually on a planet. Uh, automatic landing gets you uh, to fixed positions like landing zones. So you can basically, when you're approaching a planet, I guess you can decide if you're just going to land wherever, or you can. I'm going to land at this station, and you could. I guess there's going to be some sort of docking routine that'll just kind of fly you down automatically. Great, I like both those options. That's fun. Um, and uh, as you can see in these pictures here, 
walk around the surface. You can there's some pictures here where they're where they're actually on the ground, some on the landing pad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's nice. I really think that's gonna be great. Now, you know, of course, knowing me, and Lightning can attest to this, I will find a way to fall through the planet. <laughs> You know, I might too, actually. I he can attest that every game I ever played, uh, I found a way to fall. I mean, I even Elite Dangerous, I warped into the center of a sun. It happened. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, there's a way that there, there's something that I can clip through or whatnot. I will find that. So and I and I try to purposely clip through things too, not not accidental. I, I go out of the way to try and get stuck. Where uh, with Jarvis, it just comes naturally. He'll, yeah, I'm, he'll be walking yeah. on the exact same road two steps behind me or in front of me and he'll, he'll fall through the map, I'll walk over the same spot and nothing will happen. And I'd be like, well, uh, where'd you go? And you'd be like, ah, I'm falling, I'm dying. See, yeah, he, he has to work at it. I'm like Mozart, I just play. <laughs> I, just, I just go straight through things. So um, their aim is to have uh, basically Stanton and all the, all the planets having uh, stations and landing zones, about 40 locations by the end of 2016. And that, of course, includes trading. Now, with that many locations and trading being in, uh, I think... Now, originally a long time ago, I said that by the, by the time you have a second system uh, that the game, in my opinion, would kind of like be on officially uh, in the sense of more of a full game. But with 40 stations and things like that in a single system, you could definitely say that the game is on by that point in time when you have trading, when you have combat. Uh, I feel there'll be enough there to do just to keep you busy. And um, there's a lot of speculation, like, you know, as you see, we're going up to 3.0. And a lot of people believe, and, and I'm kind of one of them, that 3.0 might be the introduction of a second system or a second or third system. So as you know, they're developing other things, they're developing other systems at the same time that we've been messing around uh, in Crusader uh, in the Stanton system. So so I would imagine that uh, that we're going we're to get one of those patches where basically we're just throwing a pile of content that just got finished, and it's going to be a lot New of fun. downloadable content, 15 gigabytes. Ah, oh, son of a... Well, that, that goes along the line. You, they're actually... They, they're, they're really close to internally testing the new patching system, actually, now that you mention it. Uh, the new patching system, well, the thing is with CryEngine, uh, but the, the system doesn't allow the way that it originally was to, to have those kind of small patches. Uh, it, it's, it's always a big download. And the way they're breaking it out, you should be able to, they should be able to do like on the fly patches, not just, oh, here's, here's 2.4, 2.4.1, down to 25 gigs again. It could be like, Oh, we, 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 we found that a gun wasn't working right. Here, download a three megabyte patch. So, yeah, that will make a big difference. I think those of you with download caps are going to be cheering us a lot when that day happens. And I will be, too. And I'm, I don't have a download cap, but I tell you what, I, I'm just waiting an hour or something like that, you know, to get a game to download or something for a little a little tiny change is always a little aggravating. But, hey, it's alpha. We're, we're still working on testing these things. Um, let's see here. And of course, Chris was talking about in the magazine, and this is all German, so this was a translation that was done that you could accept missions on in space that go to the ground, ground to space, and you know, ground to ground, space to space. Um, and he was not sure though if uh, if that would be if that particular portion of it would be in by 2.7, but uh, he he wants to get in as soon as possible because he see he sees it as something that would benefit Squadron 42. And if that's the case, I wonder if there's going to be a lot of side missions in Squadron 42. You know, you're going to have the main story mission, and then I wonder if you're going to have like these these moments where you can go and do other things. And I think that would be awesome. I'd like to see something, something like that. Something they could do is they could have like patrol missions where you have you can go and patrol. And it's totally optional. Because it's it's not an order. Think of it like, like for example, in, in the start, you know, you start as you know a grunt, you know, you're a ensign or whatever rank they're going to give you. Uh, you know, you have to do every single mission. But like, let's say as soon as you start getting more rank, it's like, well, you don't have to go on this patrol mission unless you really want to, because as a senior officer, you have the option to go on there, and you might get you know, more encounters or maybe nothing. They could make it semi-procedural and that would affect like, uh, you know, your rank or, or something else, you know, really anything. Or or maybe just have a little bit of um, like wingmen, you know, in original wing commander and stuff, you could build up reputation or whatever with your uh, fellow pilots. So maybe yeah, like they'd like stories. you more. 
Well, yeah. like, like you say, hey, you know, I, I lived on this planet or whatnot. Let's go home and visit or whatever. And, you, know, you could do those kind of things. Like think of like Mass Effect. Like you got like all those side stories with people on your party, and you can do them or you can not do them. Uh, those kind of things. And I think that would be nice. Unless it's Mass Effect Two, you have to do them, otherwise everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, a good point. that doesn't happen. No spoiler <laughs> alerts for ancient games here. <laughs> and. Um, one of the big things they, 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 they mentioned here as well, and I and I this was always speculation if they would do this or not. It's kind of one of those in the wind kind of things, but they have announced that planets and moons are going to be revolving around the suns with naturally simulated day and night cycles. So we're not originally they had talked about how that planets might stay fixed, but it looks like they're just going to go for it. They're going to be doing the all the planets just doing what planets do, and I think that's great. I think it's going to add so much immersion to the game, um, and of course. You know, they're going to have to come up with a way to, to travel to systems like, you know, when you do a quantum tr quantum drive, that basically it's going to have to calculate where the planet is going to be because you're obviously it's not going to it's going to move a bit by the time you hit the button. So all this stuff like that. But still, I mean, that's that's going to be great. I'd like to see things like that. Imagine being on a planet and you get to watch like, you know, a, a lunar eclipse because it's all in motion you know, or something like that with the lighting effects they have. Man, I, I, I just I really look forward to seeing stuff like that. And uh then as well, we have here, they're going to be adding, um, uh, they want to add trees and animals. Uh, they're planned. They don't, they're not going to be in 2.7. Um, they have them set up uh, pre-made templates that they call ecosystems, and they can be brushed over planet's surface. Uh, they, 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 and there's some transitional blending to make it look natural and consistent. And, uh, and the planetary surface details are controlled by dynamic uh, uh, basically a level of detail system oh yeah and the planets oceans full-fledged oceans guys and and the thing is is that um that is just when i, when I play I, I was playing elite today and the only planets you can't go to in elite are basically the earth type the ones with the water and stuff like that and i hope someday that someday they add that in but to see that star citizen is adding in planets with oceans and things right in the beginning my question is is are we going to be able to go under the water or i mean, should i say under the sea but uh it's going to be luke with his x-wing it's going to be you're going to fly into a swamp and blah 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 your ship's going to sink and you'll be like ah oh, damn you know <laughs> what to call for someone to come pick you up and give you a tow the ocean is the only legitimate place I'll probably end up clipping through. So, <laughs> so yeah, I really want to see how that's going to work. And uh, But, yeah, the pictures we have here, it, it, it's just it's so nice. Uh, the only other game I saw that did uh, oceans on the planet, of course, is Evocron Legacy. Uh, but very, it's a very rudimentary uh, game graphics-wise, but very well made. Uh, something I'd recommend checking out if you guys are looking for something that's kind of fun. Uh, and just get online or just stay offline. But uh, we have here, there was some visual pop-up during the planetary approach, um, but of course it's it's not all finished and everything like that. But the, the, the magazine developers describe what they saw as, as, as very impressive. And uh, they were also impressed with the cloud system. The, apparently the clouds on, on the planets are volumetric. They have depth, height, and impact visibility. Um, and uh, Basically, you can see like mountain crests peeking through, uh, piercing through cloud cover and stuff like that. Um, and there, there isn't any artificially restricted view range on them as well. And they're including parallax occlusion maps with dynamic tessellation. It's used for the surface details. Now, what I'll do is I'll put a picture here. You can see uh, they have a picture of a pyramid and a sphere and how the shadow casts uh, in a normal game. And then there's another one I'm going to put right here which shows what they're doing with this combination. And you can really kind of see the difference. And I'm probably going to flip back and forth between them a few times so you can kind of see a comparison. And uh, yeah, that looks really nice. I like the fact the shadows curve around the textures. It really adds a level of depth there. And they were using a GTX 980. It wasn't even a 980 Ti from what I see here. And they're getting 100 frames per second on a planetary uh, surface. That was from a developer build benchmark, uh, and I guess from their full game build, they're getting about 45, 45 frames per second. And if that, if they're doing that on an internal build that's actually connected to like their the network code, then you can imagine that number even going higher because right now all the bottlenecking we're getting from uh, the persistent universe is mostly related to that network code. Uh, another piece of information we had here is about the. 
uh, Subsumption AI saying that NPCs will have hobbies and a virtual mind. Uh, they will also this will the virtual mind will allow them to remember the player uh, and be influenced by his opinion to the player uh, to avoid, avoid performance issues. They seemingly control the update cycles based on the player proximity. Uh, they go from one hertz to sixty uh, uh, the sixty hertz, like one hertz if nobody's around and sixty hertz if somebody is around. So as you can see here, they're trying to scale all that. And that goes back a long time ago. They said that a lot of the game is going to be simulated on servers, like what NPCs are doing. And none of that will be uh, brought live until the player is in proximity so they can simulate all the interactions. Um, There's certain levels of interaction on the servers. You have like the high end, which is just like number crunching. Then you have like right below that where, you know, there are certain ships over here, but they're not drawn in. They're just like a, a, a cluster of information. Like this is where a ship is and it has these things on it and et cetera, et cetera. Then you have like underneath that, we're like, Oh, they're getting closer. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the, the player level. And so you'd have these different layers uh, of uh, information and priority on the servers. Right. So all all the really big and important stuff, it's mostly just a bunch of numbers and information that just kind of gets passed around. And then like when you're in a system, it's like, okay, well, this is here and this is here. And if you get close to it, then it pulls it all in into the game world. So you're not, you know, I have 100,000 assets all over there. If any of people out there have played like real-time strategy games, the more and more units you get on the screen, the, the harder it is for the game to keep up. And, and, uh, that's one of the biggest selling points for certain games Well, when they still made RTSs is how many units they can get on the map. Like, that was a bragging point. We can get 100,000 units on the map. And people are like, <laughs> holy shit, that's a lot of units. And and for a lot of that, they scale the graphics really far back. And there are yeah. certain games that, like, oh, we can only get 10,000 units on the screen. But they are highly detailed. They have their own kind of, you know... And animations they'll go through, like the I forget what game I'm thinking of. I keep thinking it's one of the Total War games, but I thought it was something different. I think it might have been it. I think you're talking about Total War, like Rome Total War, and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe it was one of them. But um, there was a there was another game. I think it was one of, when they were showing off the what was the the ATI thing they were gonna do. I know what the, you're talking about. Yeah, they were showing yeah, all those units are each running their own physics and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a long time ago, and I'm not gonna try to find a video for that. Because no, that... no. It's just like <laughs> I'm just trying to remember what it was, and because it was it was the DirectX 12. Like, wow, we're we're better than DirectX 12. I can't remember what it is anymore. Oh, what was yeah. it supposed to be? Uh, yeah. Mantle. They, Mantle. Mantle, yes, yes. They were doing tech demos with, with using Mantle technology, and they are like, we can place this on here and this on here. And they were just throwing more and more and more stuff at the game engine. It was just a game engine. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. And it just it just played. I think it, maybe it was a, a space game. They were just yeah, it was a space ships. game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so they just kept throwing all these ships in the game. It just, it just kept going and going. I think they had like... 100,000 or more ships at one time, and they're like, and it runs perfectly. Uh, and they zoomed in, there was actually like big zones of battle, and they had fighters mm -hmm. all over the place, and big capital ships, and it, it just it just chugged along. Well, that's so, the thing, is that, is that you know, with, uh, that was about the time that suddenly Microsoft said, hey, by the way, we got DirectX 12 coming out, that should fix yeah, all those bottlenecking all those issues. Bottleneck things. It's like, yeah, oh. you guys you guys have been sitting on that for, you we were just afraid that ATI was going to come out and like lay waste to your, to your, uh, to your monopoly. So you know whatever works. I mean, sometimes even even a good idea from a competition that isn't fully implemented uh, can actually bring out good things. You know, so that's why competition is always a good thing uh, when it comes to like space games or technology or hardware or equipment. Uh, so yeah, there was this is a lot of good stuff, guys, and it's it's a lot to take in and think about. But it's nice to have a more patch by patch confirmed roadmap. And the fact that they actually had it printed in the magazine, I think, adds a lot of credibility to what we're going to see on this. And if 2.6 is going to have Star Marine, man, I am really excited for that. I've been really wanting to test a, a deeper, the deeper FPS because right now, I mean, there's that one station, uh, and that's about it. It's oh just yeah, a pain in the ass to get to. That reminds me, since I'm thinking about it, um, on the Grim Hex station, they talked about how uh, you know right now, basically, there are areas where you know you can get into combat. And you're not protected. What they talked about is that they're actually working on a system that is going to apply to all stations and whatnot. I think it's going to involve either NPCs or automated defenses. Basically, those armistice zones are going away when they get this implemented. So you can be uh, you can be 
on the normal station uh, in, in, in Crusader. You just basically, at Port Olisar, you can pull out your gun and shoot somebody in the face, but it might have automated turrets and defenses and police in there, and you might get arrested and stuff like that. So they're, 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 they, their goal is to take away... They don't like the the armistice zone. They say it's it's not realistic. You go into a magical area and your guns stop working. <laughs> uh, so their Unless idea... all guns are designed with a certain technology and there's a dampening field. I mean, technically yeah, but... you could explain it, but yeah, uh, but, I, I, but I agree that getting rid of them is probably the better idea. Yeah, and, and, and even if you had that technology, there'd be a way someone could build a gun around that. I mean, okay, so what? My, my energy weapons don't work. I'm going to get an old, you know, circa 19 or 2000 Gunpowder, pistol. Baby. Exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't going to stop, right? So the thing is, is that having hey, this... Uh, if, if they can't make, you know, unmanned turrets in the year 2577 or whatever, hey, there's a good chance that gunpowder no longer exists. Well, I remember them saying that, like, in those in the safe, protected areas, like, if you were to draw your weapon out, like, let's say that you're you're over there in Port Olisar, and you pull your gun out at someone in the ship terminal, but before you could even pull the trigger, the automated defenses would stun you and drop you. They're basically supposed to be that sensitive. So, like, if you go into a high, a highly protected zone, pulling out your weapon, not a good idea. <laughs> um, and if you go to something like, you know, Grim Hex. You can pull out your weapon and, like, you know, and 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 strum guitar with it or whatever you want to do. And they just don't air care. Air guitar. Yeah, exactly. Air guitar with your rifle. Um, I mean, they just don't care. Uh, they might in certain areas. I mean, maybe if you go to the bar, there'll be defenses there because they don't want people shooting each other up in a bar. But generally speaking, some areas would be uh, less protected than others. And I, I think that's great. I, I really look forward to seeing that kind of thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't like getting trolled as, as much as the next guy. I don't like sitting there and just like trying to buy a new hat and get shot in the back of the head, you know, and, and things like that. <laughs> no, you, you, need, you need a jacket. Yeah, that's the, yeah jacket. There you go. Uh, so, no, it's, it's the Internet. So, you know, there's someone out there is going to try to do that. Uh, so for me, as long as the defenses are in place and it, or there's enough punishment to, to make that really, there needs to be enough punishment to make that, wow, this, this is really funny. Ha ha. Oh crap. I'm sitting in jail for an hour and a half now or something, you know, uh, or whatever, something that makes it not worth it to the player. Uh, then I, I think, you know, you're going to have trolling, but you need, you need to make sure that there's a penalty attached to it. That makes something like that really not worth it. I mean, as much as I didn't like the, 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 the how, how it went down, Arcage had a good system where, where basically players could report crimes and then the player would get put into a jail for a certain amount of time. Yeah, real time too. Yeah. Your, your character was literally stuck in a jail. And you had a jury of players that would get summoned to the court and would actually <laughs> go ahead and listen to the case. And, then... and, the, and the case was always guilty. It was always guilty. I saw some innocence. I saw mob, some mob, mob justice. Mob justice. <laughs> it's like someone said, yeah, so some of the defense is like, but, but what, sir, what do you have to save yourself? I like kittens. Guilty. Guilty. You know, it was like 12 guys all saying guilty because the defense was stupid anyway. The only thing, see, if we're talking about arcade, we're going to go on a small little tangent here. Uh oh. Is, no, I'm not really going to slam on the game. I, I'm, what I'm saying is, if you went and you you stole an apple, right? There was no one around you to witness it. You you mm -hmm. went up there, you took an apple, you went, mmm, apple, I'm gonna make an apple pie out of this, and you left. You left footprints behind, and then someone could report it like, oh, someone stole an apple here. Who saw you? They could they could have come ten minutes later and reported a crime. So how did they know it was you? It's, it's like well, that's because you have your name printed on the bottom of your shoes, apparently. So apparently, you... <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was definitely a flaw with the system. There's no reason that you should have footprints or whatnot indicating, hey, that was Bob. I can read that on the on the. Yeah, threads. that was player X five seventy two, and their character name was was Jim. Yeah, definitely. When crimes occur, they definitely need to be something that um, has to be witnessed when it happens, or there has to be some other way to identify them. Otherwise, you're just gonna end yeah, up doing this like I mean, that. In the in the case of Arcade, they can make it within a certain cone of your character or something. Um, it, it would be detected, and if you went over there, you know, you could like alert it to other players in that same well, not cone, but like a sphere or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh well, hey, there was a crime over here, and if you don't report it, your character might have said something or or whatever. Or you could actually have it where you turn that system off, where it's like you don't have an automatic reporting system, and you you go into your your settings and like I don't want to report 
report crimes because maybe you're a criminal yourself. You don't want to go around reporting other people's crimes and like, hey, who reported me? Oh, that was you know our our, our ma- criminal witness. mastermind uh, in the in the, the thief guild. <laughs> <Kill> the <witness. laughs> he, he hasn't turned off his auto report system, so he's throwing everybody else under the bus in his guild. <laughs> the uh, well, wow. last note here before we wrap everything up. Uh, one of the things they mentioned about Grim Hex, besides the landing pads on top of the station, they're actually going to have actual hangers, so that basically the doors open, like a, like your head, like say like your cell phone hanger, you dock your ship in, the door closes, your ship's safe and secure. It's like we were mind readers or something. <laughs> we were talking about this a few weeks ago. Like they need to do this because Fort Olasar is just a cluster. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they're saying they said, yeah, we decided to go ahead and put hangers inside because that way. The real question get... is, were they already thinking this, or did they see our stuff and go, ah, oh, damn it? Uh, they're probably already thinking this, but it's always most good likely. To... But but I'm, I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that you know in the sense that we're on the same page of where they're going. That, that doesn't make me feel like a complete idiot, just a partial idiot. Uh, so you know the idea that that they said that the reason they wanted to do that was. They wanted the, the base to be have more cohesion. So like we have Port Olasar, you have basically four different sections. You have the A, B, C, and D, which are basically uh, mirror copies of one another. And you only see the people for the most part. I mean, you can go to the other the other the other areas, yeah, but you have to fly over or whatnot. But for the most part, you just deal with your people in your grid, your A, your B, your C, your, or your D. Uh, and that kind of spreads people out. It kind of breaks up the community a little bit. But with something like Grim Hex, since it's all going to be unified and it's just going to be internalized hangars, there's going to be the external landing pads. But it all comes together in one unified central location. Uh, that's going to create, I think, a better sense of community. And I'd hope they would take that concept and revisit the concept of Port Olasar. Or maybe they'll just leave it as it is, as you know, as a first run or, uh, or the way that base was made, whatever. But I really think the kind of environment they do from this point on with something like they're doing with Grim Hex and those internalized hangars, uh, that needs to be the, the path from now on because uh, bringing people together, I think that's so important in a game like Star Citizen. But um, anyway, guys, uh, once again, this is Jarus and Lightning Dragon. We're just bringing you the latest information we have. Leave comments down below. And if you have any suggestions or you come across news or anything like that, feel free to let us know. And uh, as always, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. And it looks like Thrustmaster is bringing out a new throttle to for a HOTA system that goes with the T-16000. I'll throw the clip up here the picture and what's more nice pictures of, more pictures make them um, spin <laughs> <laughs> you realize i'm gonna have to go in there now and actually do that at that point in time oh so, well the, the thanks to, no more suggestions <laughs>